all saw it, we all felt it, we all know that something is, well, not quite right with Halo Infinite. But what is it? Well, the flat lighting is not it. The static world is not it. The robotic animations is also not it, and the lack of ray tracing is not it. No, the problem with Halo Infinite is much deeper, more ingrained, and really stems, I think, from something called technical debt which manifests in a multitude of areas and ways. Now, before I get into that and the detail, I want to summarize what that statement actually means. And this is where you start down a path of development. In this case, software, but it can be many other areas, and you make decisions or structures that limit your options later on. Or you assume something is going to be true and later find out it's not. You built your entire logic, your loop code, your interface mechanisms around this assumption. Now, sometimes this works out for you as you make the right compromises and sometimes it doesn't and it bites you in the ass. You end up with a dilemma. Do you ignore it and plow on anyway with the limits you've now enforced on yourself or do you pay that debt back by backtracking, undoing and rewriting the areas of your source that are affecting you? Now, this comes at a cost, hence the word tech debt, as you have to pay it always. You either fix it or you try to work around it. And this comes at a cost itself. The only thing is which do you choose and how much does it cost you? Now, the question is, which did 343 choose? He chose poorly. Now, in this instance, Infinite is paying the price for Halo 5's 60fps dynamic 1080 target. This was the core focus and pillar that the Xbox One hardware was built around. The engine was designed to make the most of it, way back in 2015, obviously earlier than that, but that's when it launched. And now I believe one of the areas we're seeing is a core limitation to run the game at 120 FPS in that multiplayer. Bear in mind, this is the single player 4K60 option, so it's not directly affecting this, but indirectly it might be limiting some of the options I'll touch on. And that means 8 milliseconds per frame, and that's not a great deal of time to render a frame. But a console that has over four times the CPU performance, it's probably more in the region of eight times, eight times the GPU and bandwidth, it will need it if it has a dynamic 4K 120 FPS option added in over the 4K 60 option here. Again, I'll stress we're talking about engine design decisions at the start. So you have to limit things like post-processing, heavy layers of texture materials, composites, all of those areas to try and reduce the amount of times you're moving data back and forth and sampling. These are the easiest ways or the best ways to get to 60 FPS, or in this case, the extreme of 120. So bear that in mind. I'm not saying that everything here is based on that, but it does mean that it's a core focus. They don't just deliver 120 FPS game on the Series X out of nowhere. It's designed that way. This focus on fast frames on weak hardware means it has not been designed with scale in mind. It has been designed to maximize the strengths of the Xbox One and mask its weaknesses. Poly count will be significantly reduced, be it by reducing the actual geometry itself or by reducing the load on the screen to try and cut off some of the distant views. Composite layers are low in the game. Most objects and scenery lack anything more than the base albedo, the specular and diffuse maps that are really reserved for the hero props like guns, vehicles and some characters. In addition, lots of details, even shadows are baked into the textures, decals, mud, dirt. All of those are actually just hard crafted into the albedo base texture. They're not actually part of a decal added on top. This is all clever use and it's not just limited to Halo, let me stress. Now this keeps the cost as low as possible and this carries a bonus though. When a console powered with a 12 CU 1.7 gigahertz Jaguar CPU and five and a half gigabytes of DDR3 can run a game at 60 FPS, somewhere between 720 and 900p resolution most of the time, then doubling that frame rate and tripling that resolution range should be well within target on the new machine. And it means a quick port to Series X at a boosted level feels like a leap. And this is why Microsoft have been pushing that 120 FPS target, as it is simple and marketable next-gen boost, specifically when PC versions are also part of the development. But like I said a few weeks back, this is all significant to the fact the game is having some development issues. And I think this is part of the pressure coming from Microsoft on the team to change tack late in their development cycle. Remember, this has been going for five years. And pushing that 120 FPS target, it's actually backfired a little though. And it's a lesson of old. 
Frame rates are not as important to games and impact as sales and graphics. Now, I know, I can see the comment section below. The fact is that light resolution past a certain point, Halo Infinite at 120 FPS will look no better than Halo Infinite at 60 FPS by and large. Now I could highlight areas of temporal resolution increases, latency improvement, but it all falls into diminishing returns compared to double the frame rate budget and what that boost offers. Just as a 1440 60 FPS game will only improve subtly over an identical render at 4K60. It has one big benefit though. Your tech debt issues are cheaper to swerve as you keep the core engine and render loop identical, you just run it faster. So all your logic, animation, tick rate, rendering, they're all improved, but you just push more pixels faster into the same buffers. It focuses the engine developers on that one specific area of improvement, allows the artists, the designers, the level designers to continue as they are and not be hindered by waiting for the actual engine to catch up to what they can or can't deliver. That's what I suspect is the likely option they've taken here. Now, let me be clear. There are some massive issues here with 343. The management, the structure, the project management, the leadership overall is, is at fault, absolutely, because one of the biggest xbox franchises arguably it's not the biggest anymore shouldn't be in this state but i don't think it's totally 343's fault i think this is a case of changing direction late on in development and this was then made as a possible pioneering title for game pass and series x and that's not what it's been designed for this has clearly been designed to be a game running on xbox one and at 4k 60 on xbox one x <laughs> But what are these debt points then? Well, I think tooling and pipeline is a big one. It is widely known that Bungie's engine was very powerful, but very technical. A programmer's engine and not a designer's one, so to speak. Now this limits the speed of iteration, reduces productivity and increases complexity. And these are all horrible things when you're project managing something on this scale. Software development is never simple if you have loads of hoops to jump through to get to what you want. Nothing will piss a lighting artist off or a level designer off more than having to raise a ticket with the engine team whenever they want a small change or worst yet are blocked from implementing an idea. And this carries over to the engine itself as it likely has so much legacy and retrofitting something like a UI editor, a performance profiling tool, etc, etc is what they should have been doing for the first two years of the last five. I don't know if they have. But if not, then this debt has just racked up a huge amount of interest. Unless you have a modern modular dev cycle to manage horizontal slices of your development stack, you risk negatively impacting your schedule when a mistake or path is checked in that cannot be quickly backed out or traced. I will stress this is not fact. This is my opinion of things and I'm only hypothesizing. I'm not saying this is true, but there's definitely something going on in these areas for them to be in the situation they find themselves in. So the final piece in terms of the development process is really the fact the engine has never been designed to run on multi-platform devices, run in a scalable way. As I say, it's been designed to run as an Xbox One title from the get-go. And that's what I said way back with the original reveal of Halo Infinite. This is not a next-gen title. It's been pushed into that area because it's the biggest title they've got ready for the Series X. And that means everything else I'm going to talk about is all related to what they can do, notwithstanding of all the issues I've just discussed. These kind of quick fixes in terms of resolution increases is what we saw on the Xbox One X for a very good reason. It's a quick fix. But that's probably enough software talk and development talk. You probably want to know and came here to find out what can they do in the next 12 months if the push to next winter is their release target. And what actually needs to be fixed? Now, I will stress that every artist, lighting, programmer, level designer, and even more involved in these games or not, will know and see many of these issues and maybe many, many more. Bear in mind, I'm saying all this with the above tech debt issues non-withstanding, as I've just discussed that to show you that this is likely not a simple thing to fix, as many people will think. So let's break these down one by one. One of the first and single most important arguments will be, certainly one what I've just said, 
get rid of the Xbox One version, that'll be the easiest. But it's not really. The game has already had the development, the work, the effort designed around delivering it on the Xbox One. Therefore, in a year, 12 months, maybe less, who knows what their release schedule is, you're not going to fundamentally change what is the core game. That's not going to happen. So I don't think the Xbox One being dropped is even an option. It won't happen. This is a Game Pass vehicle. That's what it's for. And that means that the whole cross-generation is around selling Game Pass, not selling the Series X. The work was already done for Halo 5 to accommodate just using GDDR and not using SRAM and GDDR. So those combinations are already in effect and therefore the Series X itself is not going to be hampered in that area and nothing is really ready to take advantage of the Series X from Microsoft. Anyway, this title has been shipped across to try and push that forward. So there's no real gain. You don't change, well unless you really spend a lot of money, change something as drastic as that and it's always a recipe for disaster. So I don't think that's an option. What I do think is an option and one that they should really think about is if not already, is dropping that 60 FPS target on the Xbox One. It's going to happen sooner or later. Do it now, and that effectively doubles your throughput of that GPU target you've got in the system, and you're taking a 1-point teraflop machine and making it effectively a 2.8 teraflop machine, running it, all things considered. And that frees the engine and the artist up to maybe use more of that, what they did in the cinematics, into the gameplay itself, as you can see from Halo 5, because your fixed budget isn't fixed. Your GPU and CPU has a fixed amount of cost per frame. You double that budget, I give it 33 rather than 60 milliseconds and you actually give them more to work with and that means that could become the new baseline which the Series X and the Xbox One X can use to still push 60 FPS and other effects on top of it. You get a better looking game with more scope and more headroom for the artists and the developers to actually push a little harder. Effectively giving the team a 2.8 teraflops GPU and a 3.5 gigahertz CPU. Obviously, they can't use the CPU as much because that would then limit the Xbox One X, but it is an option to improve the performance and most importantly, add a lot more post-processing, as I mentioned in my previous video. And it shouldn't be that big a pill to swallow because until Halo 5, Halo was always a 30 FPS title. Halo 5 was and is the exception. So next up is the geometry. One of the things that Halo 5 was very good at was closing off small areas, small walled off sections that you fought in, little arenas that you went into, kill rooms effectively. And that limited the amount of geometry being drawn off in the distance and they could control it. One of the things that Halo Infinite's trying to do here is show lots of grand scale open areas, open landscapes that you can explore on this ring. That means that they're still hamstrung by the amount of triangles and polygons they can draw in that frame rate. So as I just mentioned, halving the frame rate means they can push this out a little more but they should work better and this is artistically on the imposters that level where they swap geometric objects with sprite based billboards to hide them so that's used all the time this is not new to halo but it's it's very evident here in uh, halo infinite again you look at this area here where the trees draw in as we go from the map screen you can see where You've got the stencil cut out where the object is and then you've got these sprite billboards crisscross for the tree textures on the tree itself and then geometry is drawn on. Into the distance they're all sprites, they're all objects that are drawn in from a very weak level of detail, just a flat billboard that sits in front of the object and when it gets closer it's swapped out with a geometric object. That's evident and it really stands out in the title. Not only that but they use this for things like fog, alpha effects and it's all very simple and flat when you walk past them smoke. All of this stands out very quickly. Now by expanding on the amount they can draw in a frame, it means they can use billboards less but put more objects in there, animate those objects and create a more dense world. And that includes things like grass. It's very static, it's very bland. Again, it's just sprites stuck on the ground that don't move. You look at something like Ghost of Tsushima where you walk through the grass, it interacts with you, it moves around. Something like even things such as Horizon Zero Dawn from years ago. That's what you need. You need some level of interaction and density to the world that's not just flat with these flat objects dotted around the area. Halo 5 got away with it because it was very flat and barren storyline, very flat and barren worlds that you went to, but here they're trying to create this lush green look that the older games had and it needs more foliage, it needs more trees, it needs more density and it needs more animation to that world. That's the core aspect. If you're in an organic world, then an organic world is alive and it needs to move. We've become accustomed to that and that's one of the reasons why the game looks dated, as I said, and many people will say because it's flat and static and that is not what we've become accustomed to. Another area we've become accustomed to is more flamboyant effects, alpha effects and lighting effects, even Halo 5, but some of this seems to be artistic based. Because they've gone back to the old school Halo original style, they've dropped that Promethean look 
the Halo 5 had with lots of particles, neon lights, emissive lights, all of those areas have kind of been removed now. So they've gone back to flat textures like a bluey mist and explosions, plasma rifles, all those areas have now been brought back. And in some ways, Halo 5 looks better when you fight in combat because of the fact that you use lots of light sources, lots of flashing lights, neons and particles, and they make the whole battles look more exciting. Here we've gone back to very flat looking greens, blues, very opaque looking alpha effects that kind of block out objects that don't mesh and blend very well into the scenery. And there's not a great deal of translucency when you blow stuff up, and that makes everything look a little bland and flat. Now, on top of this, they do not use many point lights or any directional lights really at all, and that really stands out quite a lot. If you look at any modern game now, and it's not nothing to do with Xbox One and 60 FPS, this is something that's just you know bad. I, I touched on it in previous video, but some examples I could go on to here. There's there's no muzzle flashes, there's no flashes of grenades, there's no explosions and point lights and light sources from shooting other objects or anything coming from them or to you and there's no point lights coming from things like laser beams passing objects it's incredibly rare and very short-lived and it's not something limited to the engine itself you can see here when you get shot at none of these lights coming towards master chief emit any light onto the scenery or the hands or weapons of the master chief himself but you look at something like halo 5 even that had it admittedly it was a fustum base like most of the issues in this title it's trying to cool things very quickly and it it stands out in this demonstration because they're completely flat. Now, it's not a hardware-based limitation because take something like Doom Eternal here where I'm just going to stop talking for a second. Look at the amount of lights, the flashes, the objects, the interaction in the scenery, the way all those lights and those explosions and the alpha and particles all combine to give you a sense of solidity and excitement in that action when everything's casting light sources and blowing stuff up. There's lots and lots of multiple blended lights. Now, this isn't a core limitation of the engine, but the lack of these in Halo Infinite does make the combat look flat and bland. In contrast, everything feels so dark and has no impact to it. And this is due to the fact that every effect looks like it's just stuck on top like stickers. There's just no light interaction with the world. Nothing feels connected and it just makes everything feel a little bit hollow inside. Now, in addition to this, there's not great use of particle effects. The explosions are all mixed with alpha. And unlike the first two games from the team, they've just reduced the amount of alpha and particle effects that are being combined to just razz up the image quality itself. It's not the fact there's no light. There is light po point sources on certain objects. It's just generally there's not a lot there and the overall combat just looks very disconnected to what you're seeing on screen Everything looks like visual effects <laughs> So one of the biggest core implementation issues across the entire game that they demoed so far is something that's stemmed from the Halo 5 as well, and that is the core materials and lighting system. They're not properly physically based. Now, Halo 3 has always used image-based lighting. Like I said in the original review, image-based lighting is not new. It's been around for years, even in the Halo world. Image-based lighting is when you have probes dotted around and you take an object, you turn it into a projected cube map, you wrap it around spherical points in the, in the scenery itself, and then you sample from these points to give you a radiance light. So that's the reflectance that blends with the diffuse color of the object, the albedo map, and what the light source is from the sky or a light behind you. And that is basically turned into nine point sources of spherical harmonics and wrapped into it. That's always been there from Halo 3 onwards. So even Halo 5 and obviously Halo Infinite. Now they're probably moving towards a real-time light system, which means you have to capture these cube maps in real time in the game and blend them through these points or bake them into certain points of day and you blend across those days. Many games have used this. And just like lighting calculations, you can cut back the cost on these by lowering the resolution, being per, per vertex based as they are here in Halo 3, and they move to per pixel, so pixel shaders pick these up, and they're more accurate. You see them lurping here between the vertex as I move very slowly. But this ability to use real-time captured cube maps and then convert them to IBL image probes across the scene, you'll see thousands of them across an area like this, or in real-time ones and then baking them if they're into a section and then blending them throughout the day, such as Ghost of Tsushima. 
you can see example off screen shifting that light source and it's real-time lighting enabling you to reduce the amount of objects you bake into the scenery one of the issues I've just touched on earlier in this halo analysis so this means that you can blend light sources irradiance maps global illumination all those areas can be sampled from this spherical probe, these dots that are across each part of your level, and depending on where they are and how sampled they are, then your diffuse map, your radiance map, your reflectance map, they can all be sampled and give that level of lighting that fixes the object you're in looking like the light around that object. And that's what makes image-based lighting work because that's effectively what you're doing. You're lighting the object based on the image around that object. And it can be, like say, a flat 2D image wrapped around a 3D projected map um, box and then projected into these cubes and then you see the image on screen so halo has been using it throughout the years and it's the same thing here all they've done is to try to ramp that up so they can dynamically shift that light source here and obviously the more objects you sample from it not just handheld guns you sample it across the world and that's one of the limitations because halo doesn't do that and it's struggling here it's still using light maps it's still using that image based light to project the light source and the global illumination onto those static objects and then sampling from these probes you can see it when the the screen cuts back here as it loads in that probe you see the light the actual shadow maps and then the light maps all loading in on those pillars in the background very slowly as i've covered earlier as well that's what it's doing but again it appears to be a static point in the world and that's why it's loading in so slowly from this section as all the light maps pop into each of the objects as they're sampled and drawn in in order of how the engine's drawing the object and then once it's drawn in it can it can bounce off and there are multiple objects even dynamic objects such as the warthog is sampling from it but these are are limitations that from the old game and the old engine that they're still obviously struggling with which is going right back to my tech debt issues but they've also cut back on some of the effects that the lighting objects do so halo 4 for example had self shadowing on the gun from master chief himself so when you turn to and put your back towards the light and occluded it you could see your own shadow casting across the gun that disappeared in halo 5 still not present here but in addition to that you can see the gun objects themselves they only really have to appear to have this irradiant sample there there's no speckle on any of the objects it's very very light and those mixture of materials the the guns themselves are completely flat there's no difference of material they all look like one single plasticky metal they don't look like metal look at again something like doom eternal there's different textures different materials on the object you need some decals on there you need more normal maps you need high resolution details so those combination of things to give that level of irradiance the micro facets which allow light to diffuse and bounce through and across the surface better such as skin or stone and then something like metal which is high reflectance the micro facets the surface level itself is all facing in the same direction that gives you that high sheen that high reflectance reflectance that's what they need but again these multiple layers these composite these multiple levels of materials the roughness the reflectance the specular all of those things add up and you need those in your engine so the more you stack on top the more load you're putting on the gpu and therefore it cuts down on the performance levels and this is why they're sacrificing on those areas because that's exactly what they're trying to do deliver great quality which they've done in a low budget xbox one and that's what the limitation is but all these things can be resolved quickly if they go to a 30 fps target and push all these levels up ramp them up so they're more in line with what they should be in modern games and this isn't a small team so i'm not going to go easy on them this isn't a small independent and therefore they need to improve their pipeline they need to improve their material shaders they need to improve the complexity of them the composite of them and give more believable lighting materials in terms of different lighting environments but this is halo this is microsoft this is 343 they should be at the pier at the top end the sharp end of what everyone else is doing this isn't doing that and that's why i'm saying it and trust me i'm sure everyone in the team knows this it's where their focus is and where their budget is being spent or it's where they're not investing the time they should be on areas such as materials and again harking back to those tech debt issues if they're not doing this dynamically in real time sampling the area if they were when the door opens here in this cutscene you would see the occluded size of the chief and the other guy with his inside jacket would be showing light as it beams through and it doesn't even when they're at the door their lighting is still flat there's no bounce from the inside until he stands right on the edge that's the only time you're seeing it and that's not far enough it's these issues that should be showing up where their lighting is really taking a leap forward and in actual fact in some ways it doesn't look as good as some of the lighting i saw in halo 5 and that's not a great example and really to bring it all the way back take something like metro exodus which is you know not a biggest a bigger team anywhere near as big as 3343 3, and yet look what they delivered again on the base xbox one 
the material quality, the lighting, the world, the objects, the light probes, and there's no ray tracing here. This is the console versions, and ray tracing is not needed. That's just a distraction. Look at the quality, and it's not only the materials of the characters, it's the world itself. Everything in Metro Exodus here, as an example, shows that level of believability, the solidity of the light. Everything looks like it belongs in that environment. It doesn't look flat. It's got depth to it. All the materials reflect light differently. You can see the difference between dirt, mud, grass. And even though you can see some of those areas in Halo, I'm not saying it's that bad, it's not as good. And that is what the problem is. It's not the fact that it's bad, it's the fact that it's not good enough. And this continues beyond just the materials themselves. A good example here again, Metro Exodus, because it's just a gorgeous game. The technology is superb, but 4A are one of the best teams out there, no doubt about this. And look how they use light, but look how they use atmospheric scattering. Look how they use density in the world. They create that depth, the lighting, the flashes, the weather. And that, as you look along, you can see how that atmospheric scattering, that pie scattering, where the light is actually distorted and bends around the atmosphere. So it gives that depth. Look at that. It's just the lightning. The flashes it's just beautiful the hands the specular the roughness of this jacket and the leather on the hands and the gloves they look different sufficiently and there's so many dynamic light sources and this runs on the xbox one admittedly 30 fps so there's half your answer i've just already said but it looks a world away than what we see in metro exodus and that i can't sum up any better than that I know I'll probably get a lot of people saying, but the weather's different. But even here, a nice sunny day in Metro Exodus, very similar lighting, much more dense geometry, much more dense objects, a massive long view distance, all looks better than it does in Halo Infinite. The material quality, it's not just the light and where the light is cast, it's the material quality, the shadows, the, the reflectance, the specular, the roughness, the different levels of materials, and how that irradiance bounces off different objects. And you even get some light atmospheric scattering here on a dry clear day because that's how light works and all of that is missing from the halo infinite demo and again look at the hands look at the gun look at the difference in materials look how everything looks different and when i flip back to halo infinite it just doesn't look as clean and as modern as it does here in metro exodus and it's not just this look at something like modern warfare the latest modern warfare which has legacy issues itself and that's one of the reasons why it's got such a you know 200 gigabyte download now and that crazy of the game itself but look at the quality on the xbox one s here the lighting the materials the depth the actual animation and the interaction of the world in multiplayer is still arguably much better than what we're seeing here in halo infinite and that's all about that lighting the materials and the objects and to wrap all of this up it all comes down to things such as this the interaction with the world itself so the warthog not leaving decals in the ground so some not, it doesn't even need to be tessellation it can be something as simple as just a normal map or a parallax occlusion map to give depth to the areas that, as the wheels spin through and the post processing that's where it really needs to ramp it up so even if they do nothing else the single biggest thing they should do is just improve the per object motion blur i.e add some in because the cutscene one that i covered before is really old and out of date so a per object pixel based motion blur that's velocity based allows hands and reloads to come up and you can see it here again just in modern warfare that has it and it looks superb and you can turn it off in the world and the hands and that's what they want leave the world the camera without it and the hands with it and objects of, of characters being shot the grunts the brutes all having per object motion blur put a little bit of depth into the scene use a little bit of depth of field use more post processing to improve the quality because that's what makes modern games look great and that's what's sadly lacking if you add all that together you'll have a very impressive looking next generation halo infinite there are many more things they could do more interaction more physics with the world more destruction but all those things i think are beyond the realms of the scope of what's possible in the time scales everything i've said here is possible they can in one year or give or take if they cut back the quality of the xbox one or they basically leave it as it is and concentrate all these on the next gen versions and push all these things that i've just discussed and again there's probably a lot more that i could go into but i gotta draw the line somewhere and i think within one year this is all realistically possible within realms probably not all of it but some of it um the, if i was going to concentrate on this i would say post processing and the material quality those two areas would be where i would spend all my time and effort and then everything else would be bonus on top 
if they added all those things in, it would feel much, much more next generation and impressive. And, and that would come down to a lot of other areas. Some of the character models, the interaction, the blend between Fragdoll and character animations is poor. The, no interaction, the explosions. And this, this character at the end is just weak because it's it just looks lower in materials. The quality of the normal maps, everything just looks low quality because it's trying to get so much performance out of the Xbox One. I keep going back to that. And the tech debts, you know, right at the beginning, 20 something minutes ago when I mentioned that, that is also tying them up. So I'm sure they're yelling at the screen if they're watching this video and telling me all the things that I don't know that they do, and I understand that. But these are all areas that I'm sure a lot of people would say and agree with that would need to be improved. And again, one little area I want to touch on, one of the other problems with the whole thing was I don't think the demonstration was very good. It just wasn't a great set piece to show off the next generation game. And that's a big part of these games when you show them off is you rehearse a set piece that shows off the best parts of your game. And even here, just doing a quick run through on Halo 4, I could do a, a slightly better run through of sliding out the Jeep, blowing stuff up, the area, the visuals, the art design of, the, of this just looks better than the flat kind of boring area they they did this section on the ring where i just don't think it was great other than the shift of light from daytime as the sun set but that was kind of really only happened when it went up the lift so again it looks like they're blending it at certain points throughout the game rather than letting it run in real time but we'll have to wait and see hopefully you guys and girls enjoyed this and it was detailed enough to give you a brief description of just how and why and where halo infinite can and should improve and why it's in the state it, it's in possibly likely as all things it's a combination of this and a little bit more is the actual truth Anyway, I'm sure you're happy to hear me finish at 30 minutes long. It was longer than I expected, but these unrehearsed, unscripted ones do tend to drag on a little bit. So I'll catch you on a much shorter one next time. The UNSC lost this war months ago. Your people are broken, scattered, hunted. Defeated by me. I wish I could tell you it was different.